Uh, we're continuing our theme of transforming residents into unshakable prayer houses, right? Did I forget something? Mighty prayer houses. <laughs> okay. um, so I was just thinking of, uh, instead of actually titling it How to Pray, I thought maybe it would be a better title, just some practical guidelines of how to improve or deepen our prayer life. Um, and most of the things that I'm going to be taking are either from um, the Church Fathers, um, especially St. John Christian and St. Athanasius, and um, from His Holiness uh, Pope Shemuda, just a couple of things, uh, and uh, from various resources. So uh, most of this is uh, just a, a collection of different quotes of, of, of people who experience the prayer on how to go deep. So basically what we're going to talk about um, is uh, four things. Uh, obstacles, or three things. Obstacles to prayer, praying with the Psalms, and we'll focus on the letter of St. Athanasius to Marcellinus, and then uh, some practical steps, okay? Um, we can't. So number three is practical steps, okay? Um, and we'll get to it. So, when we come to pray, whether it is in the church or in our home, or when we're gathering for prayer, there's a lot of obstacles that we have to overcome, whether within or from without. <clears throat> so, we summarize them into four main uh, obstacles, discipline, distractions, the devil, uh, and violence. <clears throat> so, and we'll go uh, briefly through each one of these. So the first thing is that, if we can uh, switch the slide, a couple slides. Yeah, so those are the four obstacles, discipline, distraction, devil, and guidance, um, and we'll go through each one. So the first one is, is discipline. In order for me to organize myself, um, God wants us to pray from the heart, but in order for that to happen, we need to do some uh, disciplinary actions. <laughs> in order for us to be more organized in our daily life, um, it shows commitment, it shows um, a desire. It's not just a desire from the heart, but it's put into action. And because of that, God rewards us. Um, <clears throat> so basically that means, if you switch to the next, uh, we have to have consistency. Uh, and I know for many of the kids and the youth who start in their prayer rule, it's difficult, uh, especially when their parents are not forcing them to do it. <laughs> uh, a lot of times when they're very young, it's easy to organize them um, in their daily schedule. But when they get older, they, they commonly um, complain about the fact that it's not consistent. And hopefully, we've already overcome this but basically, we encourage them to say, if it's in the same time, roughly, in the same place, the same environment, um, this, and we start small and we grow gradually. Sometimes when we stand to pray, we say, okay, I'm going to pray for an hour or two, and then the next day comes, like, I don't have an hour or two to pray. Uh, I'm, I'm exaggerating, of course. Uh, and then, so it's not as consistent. But if we start small with, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes or so, um, and we enjoy the, the blessing of it, it will encourage us to continue that um, routine, okay? And um, a lot of people <laughs> fight me on this, but I say that probably um, the most common that we have in the church suggestions are for evening and morning. But more importantly, if you even notice in the Agbeya, um, most of the prayers, or the longer prayers, are when? In the morning and in the evening, okay? The midnight hour is, is the longest, that has been divided into three watches, and the morning, instead of just 12 psalms, you know, it's 19. So the church is saying, okay, we know that you're going to automatically organize yourselves by spending, dedicating more time in the beginning, like the psalm says, uh, and this is one of the psalms that we pray in the first hour, and actually, again, in, in the sixth hour, O oh God, oh my God, early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh longs for you. 
by dry and thirsty land where there is no one. So the, the thing here is if we do desire God and if we want to be with Him, we're going to seek Him early. Um, early in the day, early in the year, early in our life, uh, and so forth. <clears throat> okay? Uh, and basically, for most people, it might be difficult for them to like, stay awake at night if they're late. But if it's the first thing in the morning, you can organize yourself ahead of time. Usually, we know what time we need to leave the house, so we backtrack and we organize the, the morning part. So it's very easy to just set the alarm clock 10-15 minutes earlier because we have to do this for the morning. So the more we uh, discipline ourselves, the more the Lord rewards us. The second thing is distractions. Uh, can we go back one? Okay. Um, <clears throat> How do we say this? The, more, the less that there's distractions, the easier it is to focus on the Lord. Of course, um, again, early in the day, late at, at night, there's fewer distractions. Uh, as the Lord shows us in the Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter, in the morning, having risen a long while before daylight, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there he prayed. So he selected an environment in which he had fewest or few distractions, okay? Um, like in your bedroom um, or in your closet. <laughs> That's just what we say. It's, it's a poor um, translation in Arabic, but we go into a solitary place as best as we can um, so that we can hear and speak to the Lord. Okay? In the car, uh, there's plenty of distractions in the car. Like, we say, okay, um, our ideal is to be in a specific place where we're not doing anything else. But um, the Bible also says to pray without ceasing. So the car is something we can pray in addition to what we do in our room. Um, but, like, for example, can you close your eyes when you're driving to pray? <laughs> no, you also have to look around what's going on. Or, I mean, if, if I try to do that, I'll miss my exit or something. <laughs> so there's a lot of distractions already by, by doing that. But I know a lot of families um, on their way to school, um, they teach their kids to pray because maybe they're not organized enough. But we can shoot for um, having that special time um, in our prayer corners and our prayer. Um, okay. So, like we said, um, we try to have the same place, quite secluded place. Um, uh, Pope Carlos used to say, you know, if you if you get too tired, you know, the first thing you do, you know, jump out of bed. He was trying to teach the monks, you know, how to be diligent in praying. To get out of bed, if you have to wash your face, go wash your face, and then pray out loud if you can. Um, because the more we pray out loud, the, the easier it is for us to focus, and also it's easier for memorization. Um, but if we can, uh, we can. So I mean, again, these are the ideal uh, options. So the third obstacle is the devil, um, and that goes without saying. Anytime we try, we try to do something good in the Lord, the devil uh, is uh, distracting us and fighting us. This is the worst thing that he would like to have us do. Um, he he fights us in different ways in prayer. It's not just with distractions outside of us, but also um, wandering thoughts or distracting thoughts um, or anxieties that he inserts during the prayer. So the, the fathers teach us that to fight this, we fight it with prayer. So whatever distracting is, we incorporate that distraction into the prayer itself. Um, so even by saying, like, for example, Lord, I'm distracted with many things, like Martha, help me to focus and sit at your feet and to focus on the important things. So that's just one simple way of praying when we have that distraction. Um, okay. The last obstacle is dryness. Um, and all of this goes through up and downs in our spiritual life. Uh, and sometimes we're not as deep in our prayers, but we have to continue anyways. And this is what the fathers teach us. 
uh, as if it is our first time to stand before the Lord, we continue in praying. Um, maybe it means we need more preparation. Maybe it means we need, need more repent repentance. Um, uh, or maybe it just means the devil is fighting us. Uh, so regardless of that dry feeling, um, we, we persist. As St. Paul says, let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall weep if we do not lose heart. So even if our prayers seem weak, we continue blessing that we don't lose heart and, and uh, that we don't grow weary in doing good. Okay, any questions on the first part, the obstacles? So again, it's discipline, distractions, the devil, and drugs. Okay? Yes? Yes? Yes. Um, yeah, so um, the, the question is, you know, is it okay if we don't pray the full prayer? Yeah. And Pope Shenouda uh, always says, let's focus more on um, the depth or the quality than the quantity. Um, so, like in Arabic, you know, prayer is... Right. And then uh, the connection or link is similar, right? So he's saying it's a very good word because it shows us that the, the goal of our prayer is to be connected to the Lord. So if we're just repeating words, 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 trying to finish our prayers uh, or our responsibility and we completely have no connection with God, then what's the point? Um, so that's, if we put that as our main goal, then whether it's one word or a thousand words, um, the, the point is to speak to our Lord. Um, so of course with the the spiritual guide or the father of confession, he'll, t he'll guide us to start small and then grow. Um, but the most important thing, again, is the connection. Sometimes if we pray too much, like have too many prayers that we have to get through, our mind is in, in another place completely, and so is our heart. And vice versa, sometimes if we don't pray enough, which I don't know if that's our but if, it, if we're not praying enough, then there's also, you know, um, you know, kind of like when you're um, when you're cup cooking something, you know, there's the perfect time where it's it will be well done, right? If you take off take it off too early, it's it's not going to be good. It's not going to be cooked. And if you leave it too long, it, it's going to be dry and burnt. So um, I'm not saying in terms of prayer, there's like the perfect amount, but um, that's what we're shooting for: not to be too little or too much. Um, that as long as the connection is, you know, prime. Sometimes we do push ourselves more than we can um, to persist, and then God will give us more grace, um, and He rewards us for that. But most of the time, we do too little and not and not too much. Um, <clears throat> so, this the second um, the second thing we wanted to talk about is praying with the songs, because I think a lot of us pray, but. Sometimes we neglect or we ignore the importance of using the Holy Epea or using the Psalms. Um, <clears throat> so like St. Paul writes, he says, How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you uh, has a psalm? Uh, and Bishop Musa, he wrote this a while back. He said, um, <clears throat> I'll just read it um, straightforward. It's, it's a couple of slides. He says, uh, after we finish what we want to tell God, we frequently experience a feeling of emptiness. So sometimes if we say, okay, I'm just going to pray my spontaneous prayer, and then after that, okay, is that it? <laughs> or did I, where, where is the feeling I'm supposed to have? Or where is the connection I'm supposed to feel? Um, <clears throat> we might feel a little empty. This is okay. This is normal, but what do we do? He says, um, it is advisable in this case to begin repeating some of the written prayers which we have learned. So the church provides us with a plethora of, of prayers. <laughs> whether it's in the Agdeya, or in the liturgy, or in the psalmody, um, uh, or even in the prayers of, of, of the church fathers, like we're, we're never devoid or lacking in terms of written prayers. <laughs> the church has plenty. Um, so he says, start repeating some of these written prayers. Um, some people consider this a simple, unimportant affair, but we do not mean mechanical repetition, like reciting the creed or the, the Lord's Prayer, says which would make these prayers ineffective and useless. So sometimes we do it rightly. 
uh, like the Lord um, uh, disciplines his disciples not to, not to do this. He says, what we mean is to meditate on the words of prayer with a focused mind. And this is hard. This is, this is easier said than done. Um, it means that our mind has to be active or participating in the prayer itself. Uh, some believe that these prayers are not useful since their words are not those which we wish to say to God. Um, he says, maybe because we're not at that level yet. So he uses a few examples. Here he says, we then resemble a small child who criticizes the paintings of a great artist or a beginner in music who criticizes the musical competitions, compositions of an inspired musician. Um, so he's like, if, if we judge the prayers of the church um, or of the psalmist, that might be because we're not at the level. He says, we need to go to art and music academies to develop an artistic sense and sound understanding and so have the truth revealed to us. In the same way, we say these church prayers to learn what the feelings, thoughts, and ways of expressions are, which we must experience in our own prayers as children of the church. So when we're praying, he says, okay, I don't feel anything. Well, that's because we're, we, we're not there yet. And so we realize, okay, we need to start feeling some of these um, uh, emotions and thoughts. Uh, and St. Athanasius will, will uh, explain more um, in, in the coming slides. <clears throat> so he concludes by saying, they also help us in the dry periods when we find very little to say. Therefore, when we strip ourselves of all that is fake and face our real God, we revert to the image of God and we experience repentance and pray sweetly and with sanctity all the prayers of the church and benefit from them. Um, so the church put these prayers not just for guidelines or duties, but so that we can benefit from them. It says, let us sit in silence and stillness for a few minutes each day, ending with, with this prayer. Um, so that's another thing he mentioned uh, uh, by, in passing. We need to s spend a few minutes in silence and in contemplation and in stillness um, before we pray and maybe even after. He says, help me, Lord, to see my sins clearly so I do not judge my brothers and may your name be glorified every day. <clears throat> so like we need to practice in, in playing an instrument or playing on, a, in, on an athletic team, um, we also need to train ourselves or exercise ourselves in godliness and in prayer. Um, so we'll switch now to what St. Saint Ethan, Ethan, Saint John Chrysostom writes. Um, yeah, I think St. Athanasius uh, might have taken that out. Um, but nevertheless, if, if you want, it's, I have another talk that, that goes uh, uh, in depth of, of that. It's a, a very beautiful and, and brief, actually, letter that he writes talking about how to benefit from the Psalms. Um, we'll talk about it if there's time. He says, St. John Chrysostom here, he writes though, uh, we hardly read the books of the Old Testament once a year. The old Holy Gospels, which are for our Savior, um, with what they contain, we read in the church once or twice a week. Uh, oh, that was back then. Of course, we read a lot more. <laughs> uh, each week here. He says, the same is for the sayings of our teacher, St. Paul. Yet concerning the book of the Blessed David, or the Psalms, uh, I do not know how the grace of the Holy Spirit arranged that we use it in prayer day and night. Back then they used to do the same thing. And even in the Old Testament, the, the Jews uh, had this as a custom. Uh, it is used by everyone like very expensive perfume in the churches and in public meetings. David is at the start, the middle, and the end. In the funerals for the dead and in the houses of virgins and those who work with their hands, David is the first, the last, and in between. <coughs> you see why I chose this. <laughs> okay. Um, <coughs> here, yeah, here's from uh, St. Uh, Athanasius. This is just a small uh, uh, excerpt from, from what he wrote. Uh, but it goes in depth, like you can tell when he writes how he had all of the Psalms memorized. Uh, more than that, but at least he was saying when you feel. Um, when you feel sad, read Psalm 1, like he gives a list of seven different psalms. When you, when you feel happy and want to praise God, he gives another list. Um, <clears throat> so this shows that when we go deeper in these memorized prayers or learn prayers, we, we as a um, skillful uh, artisan know how to pick the things that we need to express ourselves. 
so that's that's how we use the Psalms as training wheels. But he, let's let's uh, hear from him. Saint Athanasius writes. He says, "Indeed, I have heard from wise men how long ago in Israel they drove demons away and turned aside the treacheries directed against them by merely reading the scriptures." <coughs> and we have plenty of uh, saint stories for this. Uh, like a garden containing things of all these kinds, and it sets them to music, but also exhibits things of its own that it gives in song along with them. That's, that's just a different uh, uh, paragraph that, that we selected. <clears throat> then he says, So the man becoming himself a string instrument and devoting himself completely to the spirit may obey in all his members and emotions and serve the will of God. Um, so, uh, Basically, um, the more we pray the Psalms and the more we learn them, the more we're able to extract for us the feelings and the emotions. And even within certain Psalms, uh, like St. Athanasius describes, uh, the Psalmist will start depressed or hopeless or sad or feeling like God has left him and it ends within the same song, song uh, praising God and rejoicing for his comfort and that he has provided him with. So even the same psalm will take us from one level to another. Um, and that's why we pray it. So because we pray it, say, okay, the psalmist has, uh, in another place, St. Athanasius says, every emotion that you could think of is in the psalms. <laughs> so if you're feeling anything, it's somewhere in the psalms. So when you pray it, um, you can feel like, okay, the psalmist understands me, or God understands me, and um, because of that, I have comfort, um, and I also have an answer, because at the end of the psalm, we see how God has saved us and delivered us. Okay. Um, have you seen my picture before? The guy? <laughs> okay, this is you. <laughs> okay. Um, we're comprised of <coughs> four main elements. Um, as the fathers teach us, uh, mind, body, heart, and spirit. And so, um, I'm not going to go into the depth of what each of these mean, um, but basically we use all of these in prayer um, and in our spiritual exercise. And the devil fights us also in each of these levels, some more than others, okay? Um, so in order to pray, I have to prepare myself on how to open all of these things, or focus, direct my body, my heart, my mind, and my spirit towards God. Okay. Um, so the first, the first thing, actually, before we start, um, is to prepare ourselves. Okay. Like we were saying before, we can go to the next slide. Um, uh, Origen, uh, the scholar, he he says, how do we prepare ourselves before standing? Um, uh, before speaking to the Lord. He says, the person who's about to come to prayer should withdraw for a little and prepare himself. So, kind of like going to the example of the cooking, like in order, before you start cooking, you know, just take things and throw them into a pot, right? <laughs> First you have to have a plan. <laughs> uh, you prepare everything and clean and uh, chop whatever you need and then you have all of the ingredients, you know, before you, uh, okay, now I'm ready to, to, um, cook, okay? So, um, because we're distracted with many things in, in the world, um, we have to prepare ourselves or warm ourselves up before entering into the throne of God. So he says, um, he should cast away all temptation and troubling thoughts and remind himself so far as he is able of the majesty whom he approaches and that it is impious to approach him carelessly, sluggishly and deceitfully. So, just remembering the throne of God or remembering the fact that we don't deserve to stand before him, um, <clears throat> and we have to be warn ourselves not to do it casually or carelessly or lazily. And he, sh and he should put away all extraneous things, you know, maybe like our cell phone or um, whatever we have, you know, in front of us um, to make sure that we're able to be focused. He says, this is how he should come to prayer, stretching out his soul, as it were, instead of his hands, straining his mind toward God instead of his eyes. Um, so, <clears throat> so this is like what we were saying before, preparing the environment, whether it is from within, like our body and our 
our, in our, in our, our um, thoughts or the environment that we surround ourselves uh, in or we place ourselves in. So the first thing, <clears throat> like um, when the Lord, uh, Jesus Christ, describes on what we should do when we pray in, in the gospel, he says, but you, when you pray, go into your room um, and when you have shut your door. So here he's saying, close the door of your room, the door of your senses, uh, of your thoughts and, and of your heart. And um, there's different ways we use our body in prayer. Like, like even in the liturgy, there's a time to stand, there's a time to kneel uh, or bow down, um, there's a time to lift up our hands um, and, and so forth. And even if our body doesn't want to do it, we, at least we try, we push ourselves if we don't have any physical um, reason why we can't, okay? Um, and uh, kind of like in the liturgy, you know, when the deacon says stand up for prayer, or when it says worship God in fear and trembling and so forth, the church is teaching us um, in order to express different thoughts and feelings towards God, our body participates in that as well, okay? Um, I think we, it's self-explanatory. So let's go to the mind, as Thay Father Recluse, he writes, uh, it's necessary to make the effort to concentrate, concentrate the attention, even though one knows in advance that his thoughts will wander. When the mind does wander during prayer, recall it, and do so over and over again. If the mind wanders many times at the same place, repeat the section again and again, until it is said entirely with feeling and understanding. So here he's saying this is how we gather our mind in prayer. Um, many of the fathers suggest if we get distracted within the prayer, maybe not in the liturgy, but like at home, and like we finish the, the prayer and we don't even remember what we said, here they suggest to repeat it until um, you ha it's, he's, here he says, it is said entirely with feeling and understanding. Once you have overcome this difficulty, it may never repeat itself. So this is just an obstacle that we have to fight so that like, you know, sometimes we're praying and then our mind is worried or troubled about something else. Um, and even that might be something else that we're not inviting God uh, in our life to. <clears throat> so either we can incorporate it in our prayer or forget that for a moment and focus on God. Sometimes, as Pope Shenouda used to say, when we pray, we focus on God, the giver, rather than God himself. Um, and we know that God is the giver and, uh, and the beneficent um, and the grantor of all good things, but when we approach him in prayer, it is good, oftentimes, to approach him as because we want to approach Him, not necessarily because we want A, B, C, and D. Those are uh, things that we get in the process and nice things that we, we may like to have, but it shouldn't be the only reason why we approach His presence. <clears throat> okay. Um, so that's how we incorporate our mind uh, in prayers. <clears throat> Sometimes um, it is good to study the prayers that we pray, whether it is the liturgy or in the Agbeya. Um, if, if, like some of the fathers suggest, if we spend time reading the prayers and learning what they're talking about, it will mean, be more meaningful when we actually stand to pray. Um, like for example, uh, Pope Shenouda of Blessed Memory, he wrote um, several books on explaining different prayers in the church, like he has one on the Thanksgiving prayer, one on Psalm 50, um, one on various prayers in the Matins and in the Vespers and the Uncompliant Hours, and even some of the Psalms. He says what, what sh we should be thinking and feeling when we pray this. Um, so if you read something like this and then you stand to pray, of course it's going to be more powerful because you know what we should be thinking about. Okay. Um, so that's just some ideas of how we incorporate the mind in, in our prayers. Um, <clears throat> the last thing is, uh, or not the last, second to last thing is the heart. And this is very important. Um, like the Lord condemns those, he says, these people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, 
but their heart is far from God. We, we don't want this to be said of us. Um, and it's, it's a dangerous position to be in. Maybe the kids, God will, uh, or the younger, um, inexperienced uh, people, um, God will have, grant more mercy on them because they're just training themselves. Like we said, this is part of the training process. But after a while, you know, even if our minds are focused, but our hearts are far from God, um, that's, uh, that's a dangerous position to be in. So, <clears throat> Saint Cyprian also writes about this, and he says, uh, the, new the new man reborn and brought back to God by his grace as Father at the very beginning. He's talking, here he's explaining the Lord's Prayer. For he has just begun to be God's son. He came to his own and his own did not accept him, but to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God to those who believe in his name. This is just a reference to John chapter one. He says, whoever believes in God's name and has become his son should start here so that he can give thanks and profess himself to be God's son by calling God his father in heaven. So here he's just saying, okay, we have a simple uh, phrase that we all memorized um, in the beginning of the Lord's Prayer, our Father. Um, so when we say this, you know, where is our heart? Uh, and how do we feel about this? <clears throat> um, so, uh, uh, we just have to remember that, uh, and this is what the spiritual elder writes, the Pope Shunida said it many times, and it's very beautiful. He says, quiet in your mouth so that your heart may speak. That's the first uh, first step. And then he says, quiet in your heart that God may speak to you. Um, <clears throat> so um, we want to be able to open our hearts to God. And we use a lot of different prayers and means to train us to do so. Um, and we have to forget that this is one of the main objectives. Some people say, okay, let me throw away or uh, remove all of these prayers so that I can open my heart. And then there's nothing. That's what Andalus was talking about uh, a few uh, minutes ago, um, but the, but even the fathers say, like, let's say you're praying a certain song or uh, whatever prayer it may be, and your heart wants to speak to God. It says, okay, um, some of the fathers suggest stop and open your heart to God and speak whatever you have in your heart, and then continue later on. <laughs> so this is the way that we we have a balance of the two. <clears throat> the other thing is sometimes when we're praying, it's just. Okay, we have a lot to say, and we have a lot to feel, and our hearts are wide open, but we're not listening. <laughs> we're not listening to God. Um, you know, kind of like if, if there is a husband and wife, and one person is always just doing the talking, talk, 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 right? And, and then later on they complain, you never talk. <laughs> well, it's because you never give me a chance. <laughs> so sometimes we do that with God. We're talking, talking, talking in prayer, and we're not giving God an opportunity to speak to us. Um, so this is the second part, quiet in your heart. Uh, it should be hard, not hard. <laughs> that God may uh, speak. Okay? thing it is the spirit of course this is the most important of the four um, and some people get confused when we say the word spirit um, I won't go too much in depth but basically um, like the church says you know the spiritual person um, is the person whose body mind and heart are led by the spirit by his spirit and whose spirit is led by the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, so <clears throat> we all, uh, as human beings, have spirits, and these are the parts in us that live forever, um, but they need to be direct, like, so we can be a spiritual person, and this is what some Eastern religions try to do, um, to be spiritual, but not to, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we are being led by the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, and uh, St. Paul talks about this in, in the Romans and Colossians. He says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. Holy Spirit here is talking about, capital S. For we do not know what we should pray for as we are. 
So even a lot of times when we come before God in prayer, we don't know, we don't know what we should be praying for. It says, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings that, that cannot be done. Um, this is a very deep expression. We don't have time to go into, into the depth here. But it just shows that um, praying with the mind, praying with understanding is one thing, but praying with the Spirit is another level. Like St. Paul says, I'll pray with the Spirit and I'll pray with understanding. I will sing in the Spirit and I will sing with understanding. Um, and a lot of times when St. Paul talks about prayer, he says praying in the Holy Spirit. Okay? Um, so, just to keep in mind that um, we need to let our spirits be guided, uh, our minds and our hearts be guided by the Spirit, and we submit ourselves, or mind, body, heart, and spirit, to the Holy Spirit who guides us. And because of that, we let the Word of Christ dwell in us richly in wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in our heart. Okay. Um, <coughs> so, a lot of times when we grow in prayer, um, we might find ourselves occasionally in an experience in which words and thoughts and feelings are coming from, not external to us, but we feel like someone is directing us, uh, and that's the Holy Spirit. Um, it, it's hard to explain. Um, in words, but like the fathers teach us, these are what we call visitations of grace. Um, uh, and those visitations of grace are given to those who are diligent in, in, in all of the steps that we talked about before. Um, but the most important thing, like we said, is to focus on God and to open our minds and our hearts and our spirits to Him. Um, so just to summarize, we spoke about <clears throat> the different obstacles. Remember the obstacles? The D's? Discipline? Distraction? The devil? And dryness. Okay. okay? And then we spoke about how we need the church um, prayers to be our training wheels, to direct us into going deeper in prayer. Um, like with the letter of St. Athanasius, or like um, what St. John Chrysostom uh, wrote about in, in terms of learning with our minds the, the prayers and what they mean so that when we come to stand before God, <coughs> our hearts are able to, um, to connect with the words. And then finally, um, we spoke about uh, different uh, steps that we could use by incorporating our mind, body, our heart, and our spirit uh, in the prayers. Um, and before all of that, we need to prepare. Uh, prepare the place, prepare our thoughts, uh, remove as many distractions as possible so that we can stand before the throne of God and connect with Him, which is the goal. Any questions? Yes? Sir, I got two of the D's, distractions, discipline. The devil? And dryness. Spiritual dryness. We don't have dryness outside. <laughs> Any other questions? So we try uh, as best as we can to grow in this. And when we do, um, uh, it's easier to kind of experience this on your own rather than training our kids. Because a lot of times we Practically, when we try to teach our kids how to pray, they're, they're completely in a, another world. And that's a distraction in itself. <laughs> but when they see that we are determined and that we're benefiting, even if we don't force them too much, like we said, you know, sometimes we're, we're here and they're here and we want to push them to be at this level, we have to take them you know, step by step. Um, so this also reminds us that can you take them step by step by removing distractions for them, you know, by training them to, to repeat certain, you know, small things like, like we do in the liturgy, um, <clears throat> and um, by incorporating different things for them. Like, for example, if, if um, you know, if they're running around, okay, time to do matan, <laughs> or time to stand, or lift up your hands, like, so we get them to incorporate their body in prayer. 
um, uh, their minds. Even, I mean, I haven't tried this myself, but like, let's say we're praying about something. Say, okay, think about what we just said, or think about what this phrase means. What do you think? Maybe we don't say it in the prayer, but after we can ask them, uh, what do you think this means? What does contradiction mean? Whatever. So that for them, their, their minds are also starting to think. Um, and you'll notice this when the kids start asking you questions about certain prayers. That's good because their minds are uh, getting involved in the prayer. Um, the heart, that's a hard thing, you know, to, to wreck them on, but it, it will come by gradually. Same thing with the spirit. So may God give us in our families and our church and grace to feel the connection um, and to use the prayer time as an opportunity um, uh, not to <clears throat> check off our routine, but to enjoy it more and more and to go deeper um, and to reap the benefits in heaven, not on earth, uh, from getting closer to our Father and going to be to God and to each other. So let's stand up to pray. Uh, one more question? Um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, a question about Natalia's. In general, the church says uh, the prostrations should be when we're fasting, um, uh, meaning not eating anything. But there's different levels of prostration. So there's one that are for worship, and there is one for respect, like to the bishop or to the altar. And there's one for repentance. Um, so um, the ones for respect, um, we can do at any time. Um, the ones for repentance, that are, most of them are in the, in the prayers, we should do you know, in, in the morning when we're fasting. Um, and usually also not on weekends. Um, <clears throat> but the ones for respect we do on weekends on Sunday, because we say worship God and fear and trouble. Um, so yeah, there's a, uh, Pope Shenouda has a, a long answer, a longer answer to that. But that's basically the summary. Um, even in the first hour when we come, uh, we say let us bow down and let us worship. That's prayed every day. So technically we can, we can do that. Same thing with it. Anyway. I think I answered. Okay. The Father and the Son of the Spirit. And Lord, God, I would say to Jesus Christ, we thank you again for all of your blessings. We thank you for allowing us to come together in your house to, to pray to you and to learn more about how we need to go deeper in you and to corrupt ourselves or to direct our hearts and our minds and our spirits towards you. The one who loves us, the one who gave himself for us, the one who desires us to come closer to you and to be with you. Help us to pray without season, not only with our words, but with our hearts and our worship and our service towards you. Bless us, bless our families, and and that was to benefit every time we enter to the church, every time we open, you know, every time we stand before you, let us feel your presence, let us rejoice in you, let us turn our hearts and return to you, the one who has given our purpose. Bless us with every spiritual blessing, through the procession of the living and the living God, so that we, all the power of the heaven and the saints, who are pleased with sits in heaven to the end of the ages, hear us and have mercy upon us, make us ready to bring the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, how it is. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Free this time to the nation, but bring us to the end. In Christ Jesus, our Lord, who is in heaven. The Lord God, Father, grace is only the answer of the Lord God, and the Lord Jesus Christ. To bring the gift of the Holy Spirit. We will feel the holy peace and peace of the Lord. Amen.